This is not a test. This is your emergency broadcast system announcing the commencement of the annual time. sanctioned by the U.S. government. Weapons of class 4 and lower have been authorized for use during the level hops. All other weapons are restricted. Gamer folks. Officials of ranking 10 have been granted immunity from 360 no scope. And shall not be harmed. Commencing at the siren, any and all odds and cheeks. Ready for being murdered will be legal for 12 continuous hours. Police, fire, and emergency medical services will be unavailable until tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. when the purge concludes. Blessed be our new founding fathers. Rockstar Game, Naughty Dog, Dog. Sega, Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo. May God be with you all. Let's go! Philosophies is intended for a mature audience. Episodes do contain problematic profanity. What the f- is this? Watch your profanity. Crude humor. You have committed crimes against Skyrim and her people. And silly satire. Wrong, Jimmy Coon. If you don't like this podcast, hop off that mongoose speeder and get out of here. Welcome, welcome, my lovely co followers. Today's guest, Andre Wells. What does a scouter say about his power level? It's over 9,000! Maybe that's Bells with Andre Wells. Andre is a closeted dork since 96, aspiring game developer, singer of Dive at Dawn and Dancer and Fremen. And he will kiss your dad! If they're a dilf, or if they're not, if they got that belly, they got that panza, he's gonna be like, oh! Andre is a great, great charismatic dungeon master. Great pal. I would uh, go go to say the homie. That I would say. Really love watching his energy while he's uh, playing video games, while he's uh, mastering, and while he's performing. Great performance energy all around. Great person. You can check him out on Twitter, on Twitch, on YouTube, on Instagram, and in general. Great person. How many times did I say great? Enigmatic, beautiful, bountiful, benevolent. Andre Wells. Here's the episode. Hope you all enjoy. But not a modern day philosopher, baby. <laughs> all right. Without further ado, we got this special guest today. Let's open up this fucking bunker, baby. <laughs> Ray Charles, take it away. Lil John. Yeah. A little journey walking walking on this poop. All right, let's see, uh, let's see what we're gonna go to today. All right, got some trees going on. We got some cucks. Oh, whoops, I censored the wrong word. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Oh, who's, who's that in the distance? Oh, shit. oh my god. It's your boy. It's, Andre. it's your boy, <laughs> baby. I haven't seen you in so long, dude. Oh my god, air hordes to that. It's so <laughs> crazy, dude. It's like actually crazy that we have, like I have not seen people in such a long time. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, when's the last time you saw someone unknowingly, like unplanned? Dude, unplanned? I don't even know. Like spontaneously. Spontaneously? Like I, I honestly want to say before the pandemic, mm-hmm. like spontaneously, definitely mm-hmm. not anybody mm-hmm. that I know, like just out mm-hmm. and about because like pretty much 
Like, I don't have it. Like, I have very rarely <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> so about. like they're all pretty far away. Yeah, for real. Or they're all yeah. just pretty far away from me. So like, and I stick yeah. close to home, especially oh, yeah. now more than ever. It's seeing somebody that I wasn't expecting to see anywhere that I go. It'd be like, that's weird. That's very weird. rarely leave the house. <laughs> that's literally what's your like daily routine like or like your weekly uh um, schedule kind of like like you just grocery store like parents uh, maybe go go out for like a uh, a walk or like a car ride and that's kind of it huh there's like no obviously no gigs that was like the best time I saw you unplanned at a show I'm like yo yeah I'm like yeah baby anytime Going I to saw the a shop at a store yes dude the the dice house dude uh huh such a good time I'm so sad I don't know like my my daily routine is pretty normal bro it's like the same thing every day. It's like, mm-hmm. but it's not, it's not like mundane. It was like, it was pretty bad in the beginning. Like I, I had some like, just like weird self reflectory things that I was like, this is terrible. I hate this. And I hate what I'm Ooh. doing with my life. But like, uh-huh. it's chill now. Like I'm, I'm, re- I'm like really stoked. I wake up every day and I just like either do stuff with McKenna or don't do stuff with McKenna. And I just game, I just game super hard all day. And then like, yeah. I see my parents every now and then we, uh, we watch a lot of Laker games together. Other than that, oh, it's, yeah. it's pretty much it. Hang out with the Dude, band every now and then, but that's uh-huh. like that. That's it. That's all we do. Oh yeah, and I saw y'all dropped like music videos, some visuals, very well done. Oh yeah, check them out. For real. Dime shout, at out. shout out, shout out. <laughs> hey, there it is. Check them out, baby. Dive at dawn. You know what they say. Do it. Okay. <laughs> well, you, you mentioned like you, you do a lot of gaming personally, and I know you know so much about gaming. Just like t- tabletop games, which is a uh, very like rare nowadays to um to see like you know just other facets or other versions of tabletop games. But I know we both have uh dived into uh, Dungeons and Dragons, and also you do a lot of RPG games for sure. Um, for sure, which is super fun to watch. Oh my dude, your commentary on your stream is so fucking good. Like uh, it's so fun to watch you, man. Like just. Yeah, um, I really enjoy that. So, um, but I wanted to ask, like, what what game was the last game you uh, played uh, recently? Dude, the last game I played, if we're str- like, I'll, I'll give you two answers, like one single player, one multiplayer. We'll do that. So, like, I've just been straight grinding Overwatch with with the boy. Bet. With with the boy Ryan, yeah. So that's Overwatch oh, yeah. multiplayer grind, and then single player. Yo, I've been playing Control. Control. Oh shit, what's that? Control is sick, bro. It's like this, like, oh, Remedy Entertainment. (laughs) Yeah. Remedy made it, and it's like this, like, it's like a single player, like, third person shooter, but it's like this girl's, like, basically, like, trying to figure out. She has, like, weird, like, telekinetic abilities. And like the, like, the CIA basically, like, covered it all up. And it's like this weird, like, there's these weird, like, like demons that like took over the cia it's like oh super wild it's a really it's a wild people. game yeah like it's super Dude, that weird story but it's Lord good that. it's so good bro like it's a it's just a beautiful oh, game too dude it's like dystopian or like what uh one fireman is setting this it's like it's like modern it's not even dystopian like the whole oh. the whole game takes place in like the cia like building and it's like oh it's like God. it's kind of like like a metroidvania like where like you have to get uh-huh. like powers to like unlock other areas in the map oh shit and you're like That's going so... to other places or like you're going to like the uh-huh. same place that you've been to before but you couldn't unlock like the next room because like you didn't have like a certain levitating power it's crazy oh dude. yeah yeah it's a wild dude thing. i love that i love that it's like um dude it's giving me some like uh, infamous vibes like i don't know that game's been yo a, that was like that a while game, ago that was an og banger for sure <laughs> Dude, yeah, like, I, dude, I kind of want to get it now. Like, literally, you like access like this random part of my brain where I'm just like infamous. Yeah, like that, that game. game. I used prototype to play yeah. all the time. Yo, prototype was another one that I used to play all the that time. Was bonkers, dude. That was so such good third person. Like, yeah, straight lore. Up. ahead of its time. Ahead of its time for sure. Prototype, hundred oh, percent. Yeah, and then they made like the the spinoffs. And I'm like, yeah, it's pretty good. Stuff, it was but. terrible. I hated them. I was so bummed. Yeah, dude, especially for the infamous one. I'm like, oh, it's like a different guy, but like it was like more cracked down. And then like, yo, I like- actually never played Second Son. That was apparently it got it was okay. Like it wasn't bad, but I never played it, so I couldn't you know give a give an oh, accurate yeah. review of. Yeah, my review, my problematic take on it is, um, but same same gameplay, same like you know mechanics and stuff. It was just like over policed uh dystopian future i'm like ah, i wish it took place the same modern time you know right totally yeah, feel that anything. but i'm like ah shit well what was the um actually what was the first gaming console and game you remember playing like where, where did little andre what did he grow up doing he's like please 
Okay, all right. So first game console I played on, I de- it had to be the PlayStation One for sure. It was the PlayStation One. It was it was Crash Bandicoot. Oh, dude, that was so tight. I remember those games. A little tornado, dude. That's like. Th- that, do you remember that one level where you, you're like, um, I don't know if it's like castle, but it was like all stone, and then the camera switches, so you're running away, but the control switch too. So yeah, you got to go down, but then it switches so fast forward. Yeah, and you go oh, back up. Yeah, it's some temple run kind of shit, and I'm like, oh no, I was so bad. I'm bad at games. That's why I'm like, I love watching people play games because I'm I love bad watching at it. people play games. Like I just sit on Twitch all day long, all day you know, just twitch it, just like like ticking. Oh man, it's so good. What, what was the um? uh first like experience like watching a streamer like what what game what, what genre of game it was yeah, uh, was it that's was... a good question man uh first stream i watched yo i honestly want to say like i didn't really get into watching streaming until like uh you remember when fortnite was like super big oh yeah yeah it's still kind of booming yeah like for sure but like when it was like every like when it was like a twitter thing like when people were uh-huh. talking about it no matter what on twitter i i think i started watching this guy named dakotas who's his who's still just absolutely insane on fortnite i'm just not a, <laughs> yeah. not a bit not a big fortnite fan anymore but that was uh-huh. probably like the first game that i like i started like watching religiously on twitch and like started like really understanding twitch because other than that like i never really used to watch it i had no i had no reason to I didn't know stream. Yeah. I didn't know streamers were huge. You know, I didn't know like that was a big deal. Dude, yeah, like they like literally sponsored and all these things. Uh, same like I, on YouTube, um, people didn't really have like stream decks and like emotes and stuff. So right. it's like very. It's just them on the corner, um, or maybe like advanced. It would be like a green screen, so you just see this floating head really right, randomly. right. Um, playing a and game. then really, yeah, exactly. And I'm like, oh, this is cool because like they have commentary. And then I went to streaming too. Like exactly, um, it was like with Fortnite, and then like. Uh, indie games like you know random indie games on like the internet like um i think it was like stickfigures.com or some shit like that right. um and and it was wild because they had emotes and call outs and like random things that made it so like entertaining because right. so like, yeah exactly it just made you yeah. want to sit there and just watch everything that they have on their screen you know literally yeah it's like watching a like you're, you're like an older friend or like an older like cousin because like that's where i started like watching my cousin play because i can play the game yeah so i'm like ah love that shit what was your what was your favorite game you've ever played and and why 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 do you like that shit why nerd you suck that's such a hard question my favorite (laughs) game and why (laughs) favorite game favorite game i've ever played and why all right i'm gonna just based off of how many times i've played yeah okay yeah how many times i've played yeah. the first the very first sonic adventure for the sega dreamcast oh shit the side bringing up the side of yes that. because it, like literally sonic the hedgehog defined me like as a gamer like i like it was crash bandicoot the first game i played but uh-huh. sonic was like the second game that i never stopped playing i never got good at crash bandicoot i like couldn't get over the fact that i died too many times sonic uh-huh. was my jam and i would just i would like ru- i would be tent pretend to be him i would run around up and down the hall with my <laughs> arms back saying that i'm sonic yeah. and i'm fast as fuck and that but that game i would say just because <laughs> of the so the so many times i played it as a kid and like still to uh-huh. they have will come back and play the original sonic adventure that is probably yeah. one of my favorite games that i've ever played just of sheer nostalgia and how like how crazy it was like uh-huh. that game for its time was insane like there were just so many concepts so many levels the level design was amazing the character design yeah. was even better and it was just like it, the story was just great. It was a good game, a solid game. Literally, it's like su- such a like unique gameplay and like the racing thing. Original Naruto run, by the way. It's like whoa, whoa dude! Literally, big shoes stopping out there. Um, people like, forget about the soundtrack too. Like it's like some like kind of like finger tapping like math rock kind of stuff. Oh, totally. And I'm just like, yo, that's so fucking tight. The boys <laughs> racing out here, baby. Man, that was like one of my first games too. I was like, ah, shit. Um, definitely like arcade racing game. Um, what, what's it called? Uh, what was your actual like worst experience playing the game? Because you know, you have those games that are like, fuck, dude, I just like dropped 60 bucks on this shit. I spent, I used to spend a lot of money on bad games. Because like when I was a kid, I didn't have, you know, I didn't have a job, obviously. And my parents weren't just like shelling out money for me. They weren't like, nah, like, you, you know, you got to figure it out. 
So like I would take my games and I would just, that's when GameStop was like bigger, you know? And I yeah, would just oh, yeah. take all the games that I had and didn't want to play anymore. And I would just sell them, you know what I'm saying? So I would just trade them yeah. in and see if I can get some cash for a new game. And there, there have been so many games that I've played where I was just like, yo, this is garbage. Um, <laughs> Absolute garbage. I, yeah. And I can't even like give you an accurate like title of some of them, but I remember oh. one I don't even know what it was called, but you were basically like a teddy bear that just like went around and like murdered. Oh, I remember that. I remember reading that Game Informer. Yes. And I was yeah. like, what is this? Like, and I spent money on that game and I was bummed. And I remember my homie Ryan was like, dude, why are you buying this game? I was like, because bro, like it's a, <laughs> it looks fun. Like it's a video game. Like I just want to play video games. And he was like, yeah. all right. And I bought it. And I like, I think I remember I, I almost, I want to say I took it back either the same day or the very next day. I did not have that game for uh, like 24 hours. I knew for a fact it trash. Dude, dude. It was, I was so bummed out. So bummed out. What do you out. remember? What was like so bad about it? Was it like mechanics or gameplay? Yeah, graphics, it or? was just like a, it was just a lazily made game, man. Like, <laughs> Throw it together. and I give a lot of credit to like, to game developers and, you know, and that, th those people, cause I am very much a striving to want to, I'm a wannabe game developer, but like Hell that yeah. game, that game had no business coming out. Like absolutely <laughs> no business. The mechanics were bad. Dropped. Yeah. Like the graphics <laughs> were kind of shit. I was like, what is this man? And I was so tender. stoked. Yeah. And then it just like, and then it was nothing. And I was bummed. Dude, that's the worst feeling. Like, especially like gathering our games and getting like pennies, like a fucking toes worth at GameStop. And then you buy that game. You can't like, you could return it and exchange it. But then they're like, oh, it's like $20 less. Or yeah, exactly. Like, what? what, bro? I just put, I popped in my PS2 for like five minutes knowing it's trash. Like, I just wanted to see if it's trash, but I can't like rent a game because that game fly was like expensive too. So I'm like, damn. And yeah, it's funny, oh, too. Man, and I don't man. even know why, like, I didn't do this when I was younger. Because this wasn't when I was, like, like seven. Like, oh, Google, shit, yeah. Google and YouTube were, like, totally out. And so, like, they were, they were a thing. I don't know yeah. why I didn't just look up, like, a, a review for this game. Like, I never uh, did that. Like, looking back at it, I was pretty dumb when I bought my video games. Because I was like, oh, that looks cool. I'm buying it. Did no, yeah. no prior research. I was like, mm, nope, I'm buying it. And... Yeah, literally. I got a lot of bad games that way. And in hindsight, I feel pretty dumb because I wasted a lot of money just not reading. But now I feel like like because of that, like I overanalyze everything. So like if I see one wrong thing or like one bad thing about a review, like I won't buy the game, you know, or I'll hesitate. Yeah. On it. And it's like I feel like sometimes I wish I didn't read it at all and just made the decision myself. Like indie games, I'm like always like unsure about it because there's not a lot of promotion or like, you know, like leaks. And I, and I have to just go on a whim. And when it's the same price as like other game like you know well-known uh developers like Bethesda or like studios and stuff i'm like ah, i don't know it doesn't even have a trailer but then i play and i'm like yo soundtrack god to you know yeah. mechanics could use work but uh, the story makes up for it and i'm like fuck dude, i so will never games. knock indie games man like indie games like mm -hmm. they are almost always fire like almost always oh, fire mm -hmm. literally the building blocks and foundation of all gaming and all development oh dude speaking of um new games and like development stuff i remember you um you're like quote tweeting uh the new that latest game coming out for the ps5 and like how the graphics are just fuck like out of here remember that uh freak out what game that was it's joe um it was like, like Tsushima. that one too but i think so and it was like um it was just like talking about like Oh, I know exactly what you're talking about. It was, it was the, yeah. you know what it was? It wasn't, I don't know what game it is because they haven't like announced exactly what it is. It was the yeah. Unreal Engine 5, uh, like test, yeah, that, it was like the test trailer. They were yeah, showing yeah. the new engine. Insane. That was so insane. Yeah. Literally, I've never seen something like that. But then I always think, like, remember when like the PS3 came out after the PS2 and everyone's like, yo, what? And then VR came out and everyone's like, yo, what? And then, um, and then this comes out and we're just like still mind blown. Do you think it's ever going to get to the point in our foreseeable future I that we have like some, some ready player one shit going on that's so immersive? Oh, go for it, baby. I, it's because like my homies talked about it there and like it was, it was funny because my friend just asked me like a variation of this question the other day. He's like, is it is it ever going to stop? Like, are we ever going to be like, OK, we have reached the cap of like graphical right. genius, you know, uh -huh. or is it just going to keep going? And it's it's so hard to say, man, like I would love that. Like I I actually just read Ready Player One, like literally a couple weeks ago for the very first time. Uh -huh. 
and I, I was I was in love with it. I fucking absolutely loved it. I watched the movie and uh, re I realized that was the worst decision I could have ever made. But I'm not. I, but I, but I'm not mad. But I'm not mad about it because I was like, you know what? I read the book. The book's always better. I don't know what you know. I expected this. Yeah, you but, like don't associate with the movie. Yeah, no, I don't. But it, <laughs> can I see it happening? Like, dude, I don't know. Maybe, maybe in our lifetime, I really don't know. That shit is super. Uh -huh. It's like because if you think about like the the book in the movie, it's like almost almost unrealistic like there are there are wow. certain aspects of it that is like yeah i can see that being possible like especially with like their gear you know like the, you got like oh, the yeah. haptic gloves and like the treadmill that makes it like simulate like you're running and yeah. the visor that all stuff i can see that's probably being tested right now to this day i mean even uh uh far cry actually is coming out with oh. like a, a vr room like kind of like uh Kind of like you know the thing at Disney or like any like oh, like yeah. mall where you like can like go in with a party and like do uh -huh. VR. Far Cry the like game it. is kind of doing that, and they have like a whole thing where like you have like this little gun, you have uh -huh. like sensors on your hands and legs, and then you have a visor, so it like simulates your your movements and everything. Mm -hmm. So I think we're getting closer and closer to that, but putting that in people's homes for an affordable price anytime soon seems. Ah, uh, shit. Sh damn near impossible. <laughs> it seems yeah, damn near dude. impossible. It seems like the tech is there, but literally that, like, it's totally there, but, like, they're gonna, they're gonna, like, reformat it for something else or, like, another use, like, military or some yeah. shit like that. Yeah, exactly. Because, yeah. like, you can't have, like, a whole room for just, like, a giant rig to put yourself in just to play a video game, yeah. you know? Like, like that's a whole obstacle course, yeah. Right, like that's not how American uh, houses work. Like that's just not possible. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like oh, dude, that'd be so tight to like make a basement of that. Like just someone's like, yo, I'm gonna make a basement and like make develop my own game engine and then invite people over. Like that'd be tight, yeah. But that whole treadmill thing and the just the mechanics of it seems like it would be so costly. Like it would be an investment of like maybe like upwards of ten, twenty thousand dollars, and then. Yeah, and until it gets down more, but um, like that's, that's a car, um, homie. That's a car. Like, you <laughs> oh, buy a car, <laughs> buy a used how to sit it. Yeah, for real. <laughs> it's sad. You're just like, there it is, baby. Oh, you know what? Like, what? What about other immersive gaming styles? Like, have you seen that episode uh, Striking Vipers on Black Mirror? Yeah, I haven't. I honestly haven't watched Black Mirror in a long time. Oh, dude, it's bonkers. It's uh, basically the uh, same concept where it's an immersive game. Yeah, instead of um, you being on, you know, like a a sensory deprivation kind of thing or a treadmill they just put a chip on the side of their head kind of like a, a cookie and it immerses their, their subconscious into the game it uploads it into a cloud service industry oh and yeah, they yeah, vicariously yeah. live through it, through it and it's like fighting games yeah and you feel the effects of it mentally like physically hurt but obviously you don't get hurt but do you think that would ever um not not happen but also um in a sense like do you think that would lead to other like harm i guess like toxic or harmful ways of finding escapism because it's like fully immersing and splitting your personality to play a character in a way where it's more immersive do you think that's going to have uh more negative effects than positive effects for people uh finding video games to cope with um and escape from uh, reality i don't know man that's a really good question because it's like it's it almost sounds so absolutely like off the wall like maniacal like evil genius like idea yeah. <laughs> that it, it, it almost yeah. like you, it, it makes you want to think that there could be way more bad than good to come out of that but right. in all yeah. honestly like i don't know like i said like video games for a, a ton of ton of people is is totally a way to escape and you know make yourself either happier or just feel feel something that you don't want to feel you know or take you know yeah. it, it gets something that you don't want to feel out of your mind and yeah absolutely. if that's the right way to say that i don't know i'm oh yeah that's, out of, i mean i'm no professional i'm just yeah, guy with but this microphone yeah dude. but it's like so like <laughs> i want to say that that would totally be an awesome thing to do and it would be so i would it would be so interesting to feel and see and you know be able to experience firsthand um but i don't i don't know if that would ever be a thing i i would love just for just for the sake of it just for the like the science behind video games and just like progressing in technical te technological development i would love that but yeah. it just seems possible probably like very unlikely but if it was just like, let's just say that it was to happen i would want to say just because i'm trying to be less pessimistic here i would want it to be <laughs> way more helpful for people rather than harmful 
Are there harmful? There's harmful, but there's like, if you think about it, there's harmful things with like, with everything you do. Like there, there's a negative side to it. Even with video games, you know, video games for a, a while, depending on how you play, and especially me, uh, I don't like losing in video games, you know, and I, that kind of, that, that, oh, you like rage yeah, yeah. Like I'm, I'm a very big, I'm not very patient and I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a sore loser. So like that stuff, like there's always a negative effect to video games with that, with anything, you know? So yeah. I, I can say wholeheartedly that I would love there to be more good in that kind of like VR, super, super VR, like, like into your mind kind of shit. I would love that. Is it going to happen? Oh. Meh. Who knows? Yeah. That, I mean, definitely like wish it would be, uh, in the realms of uh, helping people, helping people cope and everything, uh, especially, yeah, I don't want to be like nihilistic here, but like, it doesn't matter. Like literally it's just a game and a story, but oh man, there's so many tiers and levels to uh, storytelling in games and so many people beyond developers and beyond the um, enthusiasts that go into the work. There's like composers, voice actors, there's some brilliant people out there working on games and it within the industry. Um, and, and you mentioned that you wanted to uh, to dabble, not dabble, you wanted to dive in, uh, into the world of developing. And that's an awesome, awesome journey. And um, I, I was going to ask, like, what field or what aspect of developing really calls to you most, mostly? That's uh, that awesome. That's, a, that's honestly a really good question. There's so it's, it's so funny because like, there's so many I as I've done my research in the past couple months, there's uh-huh. so many things that goes into making a video game like it's unreal. But literally, yeah, it's you know, and like teams, and squads, teams yeah. huge teams, but there's also really uh-huh. small teams that make amazing games. And like, that's just oh, what's yeah. so cool to me. But if I had to pick one, I think just personally, because I'm not I'm not a very like tech savvy human being like I, I, uh-huh. I tried. I actually took like a couple coding classes um, in college Ooh, nice. and I was uh-huh. like, I, they were cool. Like they were t- it was super interesting, but that's just like not my uh-huh. thing. I just couldn't uh-huh. really wrap my brain around it. Um, uh-huh. But I've always been interested in writing. You know, I like to write and uh, write and I like to read. So being like a, a, a yeah, right. Fucking loser. <laughs> you fucking dork. Do you have Do you have any fucking friends? You fucking nerd. Um, <laughs> um, but I always thought being like a narrative director or, just, you know, a writer in a video game would be fucking awesome. Oh, dude, I totally see you doing that. Dude, you have such vibrant ways of telling stories. Like, you, just like eavesdropping I'm like, alright, I'm gonna get some shit in here. Let me just put my, let me just put my ear into it. <laughs> there, we're gonna get some stories out of here. We're gonna pull some stories out of here. Um, and, and it's, it, it goes beyond um, video games and everything because that's what, I guess like the cult followers and the audience out there um, are more familiar with, or our generation is more familiar with. But there's tabletop games and Speaking of tabletop games, um, we both like uh, g- go into like Dungeons and Dragons, go into, you know, other RPG games in, in a more acoustic setting. <laughs> That's like acoustic video gaming. But um, do you also uh, dungeon master yourself or create campaigns or single shots or create these worlds? How do you a world build and how do you like kind of get into that storyteller mode? I that yo sick. Okay, here's what we're talking about. This 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 <laughs> oh, is that yeah. this is that good stuff. That good yeah. stuff. <laughs> um, world building, man. It's like it's a uh, it's interesting because it's like I I'm super. It sucks. Like I'm fucking lazy as fuck. Oh man, don't do that to yourself. <laughs> it takes so long for me to like sit down and be like, okay, bro, like uh-huh. stop like stop dicking around and like do something. But I do, yeah. I do DM for my for my party. So like, I I live in a house with me, my girlfriend McKenna, and then uh, two of my best friends. We uh, we got a house together, or uh, it's my my parents' house. They kind of rented out to us. But we all decided like I kind of got them all into playing D anD D. And then uh, Ryan in my band, he comes over and he'll play with us because he loves that shit. He's like my best friend. Um, and then yeah. we have like the girlfriends and stuff play and just pretty, pretty much anybody who wants to play will play D and D. And that's kind of like where I got my start. Cause everybody was like, well, I don't know how to do this. So you guys got, you have to teach me. And so I was like, all right, that's fine. Like you guys play, I'll teach you what you need to do. I'll DM. And I think that's kind of like where it, where it went. And I always, I always liked, you know, when I was a kid, like I would just make up stories and pre- play pretend with all my homies and just, we would have crazy adventures and stuff like that. And I think that's kind of like where yeah. it came from where I was like, Oh, I got this easy and it's fun, man. DMing is probably one of my favorite things to do. I actually haven't, I haven't done it in a minute just because, uh, Ryan was like, yo, like I want to DM. Like, I think it sounds fun. And honestly, uh-huh. I've, I've never played, like played D and D. I was like, so perfect. We can just switch. 
and that's been a blast too just being able to like role play and get into this character that you know that you can you can be dorky and weird with your friends and they don't and they don't judge yeah. you you know because yeah, like literally it's such a safe place dude i love that yeah because for such a long time you're like yeah you when you're a kid like yeah you want to play you want to play pretend and all this shit but like once you uh -huh. get to school like you have a persona bro like if you're cool oh, yeah. like if you're a cool guy you're a cool guy like you can't be like yeah dude i went what did you do this weekend oh i skateboarded or like i rode bikes i didn't uh -huh. fucking go to narnia with my homies and like slay a dragon <laughs> <laughs> yeah like i sheathed my dude someone said that like and i sheathed my blade i'm like yo voice acting it oh i love that that's that's <laughs> my like, thing like so like that right there so like it, basically getting older and realizing oh hey like this doesn't like matter like you can be a fucking right. dork and it uh -huh. doesn't matter i think that's like the best part kind of like what i was like okay i can do this shit now like i had like oh, this yeah. front when i was younger and i was like i was a dork and i've always been one through and through so <laughs> it's just cool to do now but yeah i definitely dm a lot i actually started dming again recently i, I i've been writing a campaign which is oh, actually, I, well, I wrote like a, I wrote like the first mission, basically, like a, uh -huh. basically like a demo for, for just for, for my house. And I wrote it basically because I want this. And I actually think I was telling you about this on Twitter. Um, uh -huh. I'm basically writing an entire narrative for a video game that I want to make right now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's it's in the D and D world setting like that. No, actually, it's completely it's, or it's it's not. But I basically use like D and D aspects just to make it work on like pen and paper RPG because I wanted to see if oh, okay. my friends would like it. Like if it, it would be a uh -huh. cool game. So I wrote it. That I wrote the first mission basically um, as a quest for D and D. You know, I basically I made a modern version of D and D. There's still uh -huh. you know there's still like your your stat blocks and your skills and stuff like that. And I would I changed up all the weapons and basically it's a it's a it's a 1950s like noir almost like L.A. noir the video game oh, by Rockstar. Yeah. But I basically yeah. put a spin on it and there's like crazy like elemental weapons that you can use and stuff like that. Uh -huh. and, like people have powers. And so that was just kind of a thing that I wanted to do. And I threw that out there to my to my house and a couple of my friends and they played it and they were like, yo, this is fucking sick. Like, when are we playing again? And I was like, oh, damn. All right. So I've been working on that for a, a couple months now. Uh -huh. And it's just been a, it's been so much fun just drawing inspiration from all these old movies and all these video games and shows and like being able to put sci-fi in like in a world where there was totally no sci-fi like sci-fi was not a thing yeah. in the 1950s you know so being able to it's being like, able to throw that in there and that, that those fantastical elements it's just it's a fucking it's so fun man dude it's so that's such a very unique like um time period because it's almost steampunk but then you all you could also make it exactly like fant fantasy uh, uh derived from all these lores and mytholo uh mythological settings like imagine like oh my god like a noir setting with like dragons or like beasts Oh my god, dude! That's literally Harry Potter, like the um the the beast. That, that's tight. Like when I saw that, I'm like, dude, this is so cool. Oh man, well, okay, dude. For for games, talking about like series and um like continuing on games and everything. What was one of the game series or video game that they you wish that they made a series of or a better version of a series? Like, Yo, okay. Uh, so I mean, off this, well, this was one that I was thinking. Like when you told me, I was like, okay, I need to get this right because I was thinking about oh, it in yeah. my head. Uh huh. Okay. So there's this game. I don't know if you've ever played it. It's I think it it, it they just it just got a re-release that was like kind of meh because it was like a, it was like a remaster, but it didn't. It's just kind of whatever. Uh, it came out for the Xbox 360. I can't remember what year it came out. Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning. Have you ever yeah, played that game, played that. bro? No. Like, okay, so like a lot of so it just came out like I think last week or two weeks ago. Uh, they did like a re-reckoning, so basically just like a remaster of it. Oh. And they did a remaster of it because it kind of flopped initially. And it, it's one of those cult classic games. Like, it's just like all of a sudden got this crazy, like, revival. And people were like, yeah, this game is amazing. But they just re-released -re -re it. And, like, the review, I think it got, like, maybe, like, a six or a seven. Because they were like, yeah, the game was great for its time. Like, almost everything they said that was good about it was for its time. And I, I haven't played the re like the re release yet, but it's been kind of on the back burner. It was like a full sixty dollar game, and I thought that was kind of bunk. Like I'd rather have been like at least forty, and then I would have maybe yeah. thrown some money at it and seen for myself. But that game, if you if anybody had the opportunity to play that game when it came out, you'd know that game was fucking fire. I loved that game, and they only made one. They never made any oh, other it. ones. No, that's it. It was the only game, and it was just like it was just like a it was a third person fantasy RPG, like straight up, uh -huh. just like 
fucking if if Skyrim was like a little bit more colorful, it was like World of Warcraft minus the uh, like the MMO. You know what I'm saying? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, that's, that's tight. tight. It was great. It was an amazing game. It was, it was, it was, it was good. It was, the combat was fun. The lore was good. The world was good because it was a completely open world game. And it was just, a, it was awesome. The animations were great. For its time, like everybody says, it was a really, yeah. really good game. And they only made one, and I really wish that they would make another one. Yeah, unless they're, like, cooking up something good. Like, to right. The story and I, who knows? Yeah. But, like, because like, I, I wish they would. Yeah, honestly, like, even, like, give us sneak peeks. But that's the thing with remasters. It's, like, people are, like, okay, I could remaster this gameplay for the new console or updated graphics. But I kind of want more of it. I want more than DL, DLC content. More like uh, customization give me like more story and that's so hard with like packs like we see that in like um I, you know like call of duty or like you know shooter games or even skyrim where it's like it's not the same as giving us a completely different immersive world with a new story totally yeah. i totally agree and it's like it's almost it's almost good that they didn't make another one of those games because like you never know when something's gonna flop right like yeah that game initially oh, yeah. flopped but it, it turned out to be people loved it and it's just, it's just hard because like i'm sure every like game design, you know, company or any publisher has that dilemma. They're like, yo, do we possibly fuck up a beautiful, great game? Or do we make a second, you know, do we, do we, you know, take that challenge and make it even right. better than it is? Cause I mean, look at, look at Fallout 4, we'll say. Fallout oh, 4 yeah. is, in my opinion, not the best Fallout. Uh, they did a lot uh -huh. of things that I didn't like or a lot of people just kind of didn't really like about the game. Uh -huh. Um, but I'm glad that they made it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like Fallout oh, yeah. is one of those games where you can totally make more of and people will still buy it and still love it. Because, like, I'm not going to say that I didn't I didn't hate I didn't hate Fallout 4. I played it. I still play that game today. But is it my favorite Fallout? No way in hell. But I think if they would have. <laughs> no, fuck that. No, fuck not. But if they didn't <laughs> make it, I would have been like, dude, that sucks. I really want a new Fallout. So it's just one of those gambling things like companies have to make make they have to they have to take that chance. And if it sucks, it sucks. And, you know, that's that. Yeah, honestly, like it, it's a huge risk because not only um, it, it's a risk for the creators and potential projects, but it's also like, man, if you make a shitty game, like just like story wise or anything, people aren't going to want to continue that series and they're going to call for like an uprising. They're going to be like, oh, dude, you're not getting past that guard. Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> like um, it's so it's so hard to like appease or appeal to the um, audience and the customers, but also like make money as a, as a game. Cause like, you know, all the developers and storytellers, like they started with like a indie kind of like might say, I hope I, I think. Uh, and, and like now they have to like curate their content for like this, like, you know, for like all kinds of people, like new gamers, experienced gamers, people that know the lore, people that are getting into the lore. So it's like, it's so hard, especially like, it's kind of like movies and stuff, but uh, even more intense because it's more immersive and more creative as in, yeah, it's like you have to pay attention to the game. You can't just doze off and like, uh, oh, it's a it's a little cutscene. No, it's like, dude, the cutscenes are the most important part, which is so tight. Yeah. And then also, like, I love how games like they don't let you sit back during cutscenes. They're like, you have to press the triangle. You have to press the circle to like do stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I love that. Keep me on my toes, baby. Don't throw shit at me. Um, but also, I just OK, to 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 really wrap this up in a sphere, I just wanted to get because you have like, oh, my God, you got taste in games. You got taste in story. You got a palette, my guy. You got it. You got something going for you. What are some of your top five game suggestions, not just new games, but top five games you've played that you've really enjoyed that you recommend people start their journey into gaming or seasoned gamers uh, jump on these games because like on you know, dude, you're on it like you have the palettes. All right. Well, first, for sure, you got to play anybody who hasn't. They need to play the messenger. So the messenger is an indie game. Um, it's by Sabotage. Sabotage Games and uh, Devolver Digital, like, uh, I think they published it, but that game is amazing. It's like an 8-bit, like, 8-bit and 16-bit, like, platformer, but it's, like, it's got, like, Metroidvania elements to it, and it's basically, like, like an homage to, like, the old Ninja Gaiden games. The game is amazing. The game is super oh, colorful, man. and the soundtrack, Rainbow Dragon Eyes made the soundtrack, and it's, oh, it's, it's a beautiful soundtrack. It's, it, like, it comes in 8-bit and 16-bit, but that's a really, really good game. Mm -hmm. Um, another game that's also an indie game made by like a bunch of students as like a thesis project, actually. They went to like fucking <laughs> NYU or like Harvard. They're fucking geniuses. Um, oh, man. um, the 
it's the Outer Wilds. So not the Outer Worlds. The Outer Worlds is a game by Obsidian, which is also really good. But the Outer mm-hmm. Wilds is a it's a gorgeous game, and you just basically yeah, you're just like exploring space, and there's like there's like a gimmick to it that like I don't want to spoil because it's awesome. But it's basically like a space exploration game and like it's just like lore like there's no fighting in it like there's no combat. It's just an exploration game where you read a lot and like there's lots of lore but it's it's absolutely absolutely gorgeous and it's just a really really fun game. And when you yeah. get to like when you get to like that twist, you're like, no shit, that's insane. <laughs> Wait, did you stream that? You like stream some? Uh... I did. I did yeah. stream that game. Yeah, dude, that was like cool. It was all like lore based and like it was super explorative, like super big. I fucking love it. And it's on Xbox Games Pass. So if, for free, yeah. if anybody has an Xbox Games Pass, which is also just a, a completely different. That is like another conversation we need to have another time is the entirety oh, yeah. of the Xbox Games Pass and how fucking yeah. genius it is. Uh, OK, but three other games, three other games. Shit. OK, so I said Messenger, Outer Wilds. Um, honestly, Ghost of Tsushima, if you guys haven't played it yet, it is one of the most gorgeous games I've ever played in my entire life. And it's about ninjas and samurai and like, like you can't beat that gorgeous game. Oh, absolutely. Amazing. Naughty Dog, like literally knocked out of the park. Was it Naughty Dog? I think I was wrong. Is it Naughty Dog? Dude, actually, yeah, I was like, I'm looking it up right now. I think it was oh, Sucker Punch. I'm sorry. Sucker Punch. Sucker Punch. Oh, Sucker Punch. Yes. It's been a while since then. Okay. Right. Yeah, exactly. Sucker Punch. So, okay. That game. Amazing. Um, two more Sonic Adventure. Obviously, if you haven't played it, you're a crazy person because literally that game came out forever ago, but totally like yeah. new beginner video gamer, totally play Sonic Adventure at least once in your life for oh, sure. Essentials. Yeah, essentials. Yeah. Essentials. And then last but not least, man. Um, dude, I gotta, I gotta really think hard here. I, I like suggestions. I'm trying to think of like games that I know people haven't played. Right, right. Ah, this is a toughie, man. I'm trying to think of all the games I have. Oh, like, straight up, literally Final Fantasy VII. Oh, easy. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about those. Damn. Probably another, like, probably one of my top five favorite games of all time, the remake, but also right. the original. It. It's dated for sure. And if you can't get Pat, like for me, it it was hard for me. It was hard because I'm a very like I'm a visual person and graphics like mean a lot to me. And I can respect that the game for its time was fucking awesome in 97 whenever it came out for polygon, like the way the polygons were made like that was unheard of. But it's yeah. it's hard to play now for somebody who is very much like I like graphics. It's definitely not. It's not pretty. It's not easy on the eyes. But playing that game, man, it'll put you in your feels, bro. Like it is it is a, it is a masterpiece story wise. Combat wise, it's great. You know, it's basically just like, you know, uh, like Pokemon combat, like turn based combat. Yeah. Um, Final Fantasy seven is one of the greatest games ever made. So, yeah, that is my final answer. So we got Messenger, the Outer Wilds. <laughs> Um, Ghost of Tsushima, Sonic Adventure, and then Final Fantasy VII. Oh, dude, those are so, uh, that's a thick list too. Thick with the Q U E. That is, dude, I totally forgot about Final Fantasy because uh, the last guest, um, uh, Dallas, talked about Kingdom Hearts, and I know that's based on the lore of of some Final Fantasy characters. And then I'm like, yo, fine. I've been thinking about Final Fantasy for like a while, but then you, oh, dude, you unlock some memories today. I'm going to find that Crash Bandicoot on like PSN or something. Oh, man. I know, man. Uh, and I'm going to watch some more streams of like Outer Wilds, but not Outer Worlds, Outer Wilds. A very specific, different Very game. specific, yeah. different game. They both came out around the same time. And it was very difficult for a lot of people yeah. to understand. Yeah. And, and uh, I think it was like this other. Um, or I think it's that one. It's very vibrant, very like saturated, and and it's like um you could like fly the uh the spaceship, and then there's like dinosaur kind of creatures. It looks so cool, like it literally looks awesome. But people were like, oh, I want like combat, or like I want some more adventure. I'm like, well, that is adventure. That is fi- you're literally, yeah, you're like a space Indiana Jones. That's yes, awesome. like that's the definition of it. Yeah, I'm like, come on, get over it. Like if you play, if you get a a campaign going on that, like that's so that would be so cool too. Like, you know, not a lot of combat. Eh? Yes. I'd, I'd be down. But that's just because we're uh, advanced. We're better than everyone. It's fact. That's why. <laughs> you heard it here first. Oh, me man, me oh, and Paul are just better than you. You're literally just you fucking nerds out there. You, can't, you don't even know games at all. Oh, man. Thank, dude, thank you so much for for uh, for hopping on, hopping on this nice little walk with me. Uh, let's see. I don't know where the walking sound is. There it is. Thank there you so is. much for having oh, me. Oh, man. I'll have you any day, man. Especially, dude, talking about um, the future gaming. Like, once the PS5 comes out, we kind of, like, can, like, you know, explore and, like, watch people play other games, new releases and stuff. Oh, it's going to end the new Xbox, too. Oh, that's going to be a whole journey this next uh, season. 
Great. I'm so, I'm so excited for this next generation, man. Like the games are just getting more and more off the rails. Awesome. And I just, I, I can't even fathom how great they're going to get in these next, this, this next generation. Right. Oh, dude. Like, like we said earlier, it's like, when will it stop? Like when will, when will technology like over uh, or like cap out? When will Yo, graphics cap I out? hope never. never. I hope never. Yeah. They're already making like 8k TV. So I'm like, Oh my God, dude, gaming systems, 8k. My eyes are even 8k. Dude. Yeah. Like, bro, what do I do at this point? <laughs> like what? There's no subscription to that, but um, I don't want to hold, I don't want to hold your uh, supply run too late. Do you want to plug anything like your gaming channel, your YouTube, your uh, personal, your band account, anything you want to tell the lovely, lovely cult followers out there? Dude, honestly, I just want to shout out my homie Hosser, H-O-S-S-R on Twitch. He's grinding so hard, <laughs> so absolutely ridiculously hard, and I can't stress enough, like, he's going to be the next big thing. Like, he's grinding. So uh, that's all I want to shout out. I don't need to shout out myself. I talked enough on this thing, but him for sure. People need to follow him. H-O-S-S-R on Twitch. Give that guy a follow. H-O-S-S-R. Y'all here to hear, folks. He is the next thing. He is the next supreme leader. Oh, fuck. Yeah. All right. I'm going to get to send down this bunker here. Woo! That was loud. (laughs) It's just screaming in my ear. Just free jazz and Ray Charles and some applause, baby. Got some good superiors going on. And I hope, I hope you find uh, some, uh, not some Raiders. If you find Raiders out there, you gotta kill them, man. Just 360 Easy. Easy. 